With AGDQ going on, I think it's as good a time as ever to make this video. Glitches for the purpose of this video are unintended exploits in the game's program. They aren't meant to be in the game, but can and have often put new life into games. It's this dissonance between the developer's intent and the end result that I always found intriguing. I'm going to borrow some ideas from Chris Delion to try and explain what makes glitches so fun. In his work, he coined the idea that sports have rules and video games have laws. This is to say that in sports, you don't do something because it's against the rules, but in video games, you don't do something because it isn't coded into the game. For example, in soccer, you don't use your hands because the rules don't permit you. But in the FIFA games, you don't use your hands because you aren't programmed to be able to. This is what limits games. You can't do anything the developer doesn't express in the code. But in sports, you just have to follow the rules. In 2016, Stephen Curry became such a revolutionary shooter that he caused balancing problems for 2K16. At the time, it was impossible to program a realistic Stephen Curry because he was so unlike anything the NBA had seen up to that point. He was hitting all sorts of three-point shots. We're talking half-court shots, off-the-dribble shots, contested by three people shots, all so consistently that it was beyond fluke. Now, I don't think I need to explain why making a player that can consistently make half-court shots would break a game. Again, with video games, you aren't allowed to do anything that isn't expressed in the code. However, these limitations can be foregone with glitches. Glitches can take advantage of the game's code in a way the developers didn't intend. Game developers can only think of so many ways to utilize their assets, but with a passionate community, diligent players, and creative minds, limits unbeknownst to the developers can be broken. Glitches can give the player freedom, which artificially breaks the previously established laws of the game. The glitches capitalize on not what the game wants you to do, but what the game is capable of doing. It's what helps make these games more creative in a way the developers never intended. The glitches are often hard and unnatural to perform as they aren't something the game wants you to do, but they can be just as integral to the conscious game design choices for those taking advantage of them. It creates a new set of skills for the player to master. For spectators, it's seeing something you've never seen in something you're already familiar with. You thought you'd learned the intricacies of your favorite game. Now suddenly, you're introduced to an entirely new concept or way of playing. Imagine you're in a two-dimensional world. You've been in there all your life and it's all you know. Then some cool third dimension kid comes up and shows you this entirely new dimension. A new plane of existence you were completely unaware of. Do you have any idea how crazy that would be? That's kind of what it feels like to be introduced to some glitches. Eh, maybe not to that extent, but you know what I mean. To all the anti-fun naysayers out there, I understand glitches aren't always conducive to a more fun game. More times than not, they feel cheap and exploitative. This is usually only the case when they intrude on the core gameplay. There's no better example of this than Sonic 06. I don't think I need to explain what's wrong with Sonic 06. Another style of glitch isn't one that hampers the core gameplay as they're hard to come across without deliberate action. But they still aren't fun as they become too prominent and take away from the beauty of the core gameplay. An example that comes to mind for me is the classic Sonic games. You won't come across its wall exploits in normal gameplay, but in speedrunning it's very important. A lot of the beauty of those games come from its momentum-based speedy platforming that also had a layer of freedom and expression. But in speedrunning, they exploit the glitches by running through walls and whatnot. This takes away from the core appeal of the game, which can alienate a large portion of the game's audience. At least, in my opinion, I love classic Sonic games, but I'm not a fan of their speedruns for this very reason. I actually prefer to watch the players optimize the game's mechanics by watching no glitch runs of the classic games instead. I prefer watching precise platforming that allows a layer of freedom to still be available to the players. And for this, there's no better example of this being done effectively than in Super Mario 64. What can make speedruns, in particular platforming speedruns, so captivating is the absurd degree of control, precision, maneuverability, along with serious optimization the runners put on display. Super Mario 64 was Mario's first leap into the third dimension. Miyamoto knew players would want to explore as much of the third dimension as possible, so he compensated. Super Mario 64 still stands as one of the only 3D platform sandbox-style games. 
This is why seeing the game completed in less stars than normal is exciting. You're going beyond what the game wants you to do and doing what is possible. Seeing professional players optimize such an open game with precise jumps and slick movement, with of course creative use of glitches, really entice the fans. Super Smash Bros. Melee is an example of how glitches, or unintended exploits, can not only enhance the game, but completely change it. This is because a lot of superficial design choices ended up accidentally radically changing the game when optimized. Super Smash Bros. Melee was a fine, even great game on release, but there's no doubt the game wouldn't be as popular as it is today without the community unpeeling the layers of mechanical depth the game had. I'll spare you the details and just give you a brief rundown. Melee's mechanics have been well documented on this site after all. I think the main thing Melee's mechanics did was give the game more freedom. To put it really simply, Melee's glitches, exploits, or advanced techniques complement its core game design emphasizing combos and movement options. If the classic Sonic games had a glitch where you could perhaps drop dash in Sonic 2, I would probably look upon its speedruns more favorably. This is because I believe the drop dash takes advantage of the speed-based momentum platforming I established previously. If such a technique were possible, I think it'd be a good exploit, like Melee. And speaking of Melee, the main problem with Melee is how unwelcoming it can be. The mechanics can be hard on their own to perform, but they become 10 times harder to implement into your game. By nature of being a fighting game, it's a competition. This means if you were to start playing Melee now, you would be directly competing against players who have been playing for years, even decades longer than you have. And unlike speedrunning where you can see your time improve over time, in a game where you directly compete against others, it's really hard to gauge your progress. I personally think that Mario Kart Wii strikes the best balance between accessibility and complexity. It has a lot of techniques that can take years to master. Due to the amount of precision and control the game offers compared to other games of its genre, it gives you a lot of room to optimize and find advanced shortcuts. Over 10 years after the game came out, people are still finding new ways to optimize the game. With all of that being said, I still feel the game is simple enough to where it isn't too overwhelming for new players to find their footing. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video. No fancy transition here. I really just wanted an excuse to talk about Mario Kart and Mario 64, and just why glitches are so fun to me. I feel like they're kind of a relic of the past. Like, games nowadays have updates which can take away these glitches, and in general, they're way too polished to really have all these game-breaking glitches nowadays, I feel. Games have just gotten too good. The programs and the programmers are just more sophisticated. There's more rigorous testing, probably. And yeah, I think it's just fun to look back on these games and what made them so fun to me. I hope I explained it well. These, of course, aren't the only games that take advantage of you know, the concepts I mentioned, but they were the main ones and ones I've wanted to talk about for a really long time. Anyways, I'm done ranting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, peace.